minutes before service begins today and here are some things you can do in the meantime. Number one, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, turn on your post notification to stay updated on our weekly services. Number two, if you are here by yourself, make sure you tag your friends and family so they also can be enriched and blessed as well. And lastly, click the little arrow at the bottom of your screen share on your timeline so your friends and family can tune in. This is all for now. See you soon. updated on our latest content, messages, and announcements is by following our thread, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook at TOGRH. By clicking subscribe and turning on your post notification bell, you're automatically reminded every time we go live for our services. With that being said, if you are blessed by what you have heard today or the experience or you heard something impactful, please do not forget or do not hesitate to share on your social media platform. Because sometimes it's the only way the gospel reaches some certain people. Do not forget to tag us at TODRH. the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord, somebody. Church, praise the name of the Lord. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise the name of the Lord. Today is 12th of May, 2024. And in Canada, every second Sunday of May is what? Mother's Day. Father, we commit every mother in the throne of grace into your hands. Bless them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We worship you, Father. We honor you, Father. We welcome your presence, Jesus. We surrender to you, Holy Spirit. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We surrender all our elements to you. We yield to you. We say, saturate this place with your presence. Saturate this place with your awesome presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, saturate this place with your awesome presence. We 
We thank you, Jesus, for the salvation of our souls. We thank you, Jesus, for your shed blood on the cross of Calvary. We thank you, Jesus, for calling us to salvation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Holy Spirit. We worship you, Jesus. Lift up your hands and welcome him. Lift up your hands and welcome him. We welcome you. We yield to you. We surrender to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We commit those that are everyone present here into God's presence. Father, even as we come as we are, Father, may we not go the same way. Touch somebody's life this morning, Lord. Even those online who commit unto your hands, Lord. We pray, Father, there will be harvest of souls even online in the name of Jesus. And even those that are still on their way, Father, we commit to you. They will arise safely in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We commit all our equipment into your hands even as we prepare for worship, Lord. All our instruments, musical instruments, they will function smoothly in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We commit every worker in the vineyard, every volunteer into your hands, Lord. Everyone, even as they take their duty post, Lord, that will embolden them, that will strengthen them, that they will give in their best of service, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Even now, our officiating minister for today, Lord, will commit into your hands that the words, every word that will proceed from their mouth will be the word that you've ordained for your children, for your people this morning, that will touch our lives and change our lives in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We commit our senior pastor and all our pastors into your hands, Lord. We thank you for your grace upon their lives, Lord. We pray that the oil on their head, Father, will continue to overflow in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 If our neighbors, our neighbors will commit into your hands, that the blessings upon TOG we rub off from them, Lord, also, just by association in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Worship him. Worship him. Somebody worship him. We honor you. Worship him. We worship him, Father. We honor you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. Amen. Amen. Today, what shall we do today? I will lift up my voice in praise. Amen. Today. Oh 
Let's see what God's right now. You are good. You are
bless the name of the Lord. Let's raise up our voice and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Let's give him all the praise. Let's worship him. Let's adore his holy name, his Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the one who was and is and is to come. Let's raise up your voice and bless his holy name. Let's raise up your voice and glorify his name, his Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The first and the last, Mandila lende de lebo si ke lende de lebo si ndarabos me la lundo lo 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 bo si kala lenda lende de lebo me kalundo lo 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 bo si ndarali la lende de lebo. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are glorious. You are wonderful. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You can be like you, Almighty God. Oh, can be like you, King of Glory. Oh, can be like you, Ancient of Days. Oh, can be like you, Jehovah Jireh. Lord, we bless your name. We magnify your name for the privilege to be counted among the living. Almighty God, we say, Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your holy name, O God. 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 Receive all the praise. Receive all the glory. Receive all the honor. Receive all the adoration. Receive all the praises. Be thou glorified. Be thou exalted. Be thou magnified. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Ancient of Days. Thank you, Jehovah Jerry. Thank you, Jehovah Nisi. Thank you, Alpha and Omega. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Ancient of Days. For in Jesus' name we pray. We are going to pray for all the mothers in this house. We are going to say, Father, upon all our mothers in this house, we pray that you continue to feed them with your wisdom, with your power, with your knowledge in everything they do. In the name of Jesus, raise up your voice and begin to pray. Lord, we lift up all the mothers in this house. We commit them into your hands, Almighty God. And we pray, O King of glory, that you feed them, O Lord, with your wisdom, you feed them, O oh God, more with your power. You feed them more, O oh God, with your anointing. In the name of Jesus, everything they need, O oh God, to perform their task as godly women, Lord, we receive it from them. In the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Ancient of Days. For in Jesus' name we pray. Today's Mother's Day, so we are going to pray to God to give our mother a special need. So that special need, um, I'm going to put it in one category. We're going to believe God for women that are believing God for the fruit of the womb. The Bible says there shall be no barren in Zion, nor those that cast room. So we are going to pray to the Almighty God, believe God in this house. There shall be no barren in this house. We are going to pray also at the same time for those that are looking for their partners, that the Almighty God will bring them wherever they are from north, south, east, and west. God will bring them together and find their partners. Let us raise up our voice and begin to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Almighty God, the Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Lord, we have come, O God, in your presence and we ask, O God, for a special gift this morning. Throne of grace, we ask, O God, for as many believing you for the fruit of the wombs, O God. The Bible says there shall be no barren in our midst. Lord, we decree and declare there shall be no barren in this house. In the mighty name of Jesus, and for those that believe you for the partners, O God. Father God, we pray that you bring them in. In the mighty name of Jesus, we worship your name. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. Blessed be your holy name, O oh God. Glorious are you, O oh Lord. Wonderful are you, O oh God. To be the glory, honor, and power. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' name we pray. Last. 
There are some women that feel abandoned. They feel alone. The Bible says, in Psalm 27, verse 9, Psalm 27, verse 9, do not hide your face from me. I do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me. God, my Savior. If you are here, you feel rejected. You are here, you feel alone. You are here, you feel abandoned. God is there for you. God is your refuge. We are going to pray to the Almighty God for as many people who feel rejected right now, who feel abandoned, who feel alone. Almighty God, be their refuge. Come and comfort them. Raise up your voice and pray in the mighty name of Jesus, King of glory, ancient of days, everlasting God. We pray, oh God, for as many people feel alone, abandoned, rejected, Almighty God, by your mercy, by your mercy, be their refuge, oh God. Be their comfort, oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive all the praise, receive all the glory, receive all the honor and adoration. For in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can have your seat. God bless you. In the presence of the Lord. Praise God. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? I wake up, but I make her to do the work on me. God bless you. He's walking. He's walking. Praise the Lord. Let somebody shout hallelujah. I know a lot of people will be wondering, wondering what are we doing? Is it a... Uh, Father's Day or, <laughs> or Mother's Day. Uh, today we just want to celebrate our mothers. That is why we told them to sit. To sit so that we appreciate them and celebrate them. Uh, for those that have come to celebrate with them, we appreciate you. Those that are online uh, worshiping with us, we appreciate you. And I want to this is this opportunity to ask those that are fellowshipping with us for the first time to indicate either raising up their hands or standing if they will if you are worshipping with us for the first time if you have come today for the first time to celebrate our mothers praise the lord we have somebody there thank you We have somebody over there too. We appreciate your coming to fellowship with us. We appreciate you. Uh, and for those online, if you are if you are worshiping with us for the first time, there's a link where you click, and our welcome team will reach out to you. Praise the Lord. And uh, I want to crave your indulgence. At the end of the service, we have a special place for you. Our welcome team will come and attend to you. Uh, we appreciate you all for coming. The Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I want to tell us that, if you, especially for those that are worshiping for the first time with us today, if you don't have a Bible-believing church, this is a place to be. The Lord will strengthen you, and the Lord will answer your prayers even as you have come today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please enjoy the rest of the service. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you're happy and you know, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know, and you really want to show, if you're happy and you know, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know, give me a big smile. Some smile I suspect here. If you're happy and you know, give me a big smile. Uh-huh. If you're happy and you know, and you really want to show, if you're happy and you know, say amen. Praise the Lord. I 
happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in this house. We love you. We celebrate you. We, we, we say thank you. Thank you for all that you have been doing and what you are doing and what you continue to do. We say thank you. And welcome to this service as uh, the men are taking over the service. How are we doing? So we are doing good so far, right? Good. All right. So, and uh, we, we thank you so much for coming. And uh, we are moving now into um, a series of questions. So I'm going to invite the panelists. But one thing I would like to ask and request everybody, as I call them to come, if you don't clap, I'll bring you in front and then you'll be asking the questions. <laughs> and the deal is, if you fail one of my questions, you're going to feed this house. Next time we are coming for church service, you're going to feed all of us. Is that a deal? Yes. Okay, so I have my watchman in the house, just in case you don't know. Like, if you don't clap, <coughs> you're going to come here in front. So without wasting much of our time, I'm going to call a maker to join me on stage. God bless you. I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm watching. And the next person I'm going to call Barafikayo on stage. All right, all right. And the last person to call, I'm going to call our, my own bishop, my own bishop, Bishop David, to join me on stage. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. So, um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna have some free questions for them, and then after this, um, we're gonna ask you also to ask questions. Uh, it's a Mother's Day, so, and I know we have capable men in this house to answer all the questions, and there's no doubt about it. Welcome, sir. Uh, God bless you for, for coming. Um, so, we're gonna start. Let me start with Kyle. <laughs> well, why are you surprised, man? <laughs> so, um, I'd like you to tell us a little bit. Um, when you were preaching last time, you, you told us how your mother played a very uh, important role in your life. So, the question is, how has your mother influenced your spiritual growth and development? Thank you, thank you, Mandy, for that question. So, the, when I was speaking last time, what I said pretty much was my mom would tell me to recite Psalm 91, and that stuck with me, right? Yeah. Now, one thing that has also stuck is my mom showed me what true love is. Mm -hmm. And she she's the epitome of love, in my own opinion, and she showed me the kind of love that God has for us, mm -hmm. right? So for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and I know that my mom has sacrificed a lot for her children, right? And she showed me that, so that's the first thing. And she has also been an example to follow, mm -hmm. right, from a physical perspective in terms of, I can remember, even when I went back to Lagos, like I'll come downstairs and I'll hear like my mom speaking in tongues so loud that it would wake you up, right? And then I would go downstairs and I would join her, right? <laughs> so that, that for me allowed me to, okay, know also how to pray, pray in the spirit, right? So that, is, that has helped my spiritual growth. And I can remember when I was younger, to be honest, like reading the Bible was like a chore. But my mom would like sit you down and ask you to read the Bible with her. And, and there's a scripture, I think it's Proverbs 22, verse 6. Uh, Train your child in the way of the Lord, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. So that, I'll, I, like I said the last time, I'll tell every parent, and I know I would tell my children in few, and I would raise my children in the way of the Lord because it has helped me. And what I also said the last time was, storing up scriptures in, in 
with your heart. And my mom would always tell me, you are the head and not the tail, right? Mm-hmm. She would tell me, you are a star for Jesus. So she would just call you and pronounce that on you and declare the words of the Lord to you. And then in low times, in difficult moments, you remember those words and they stuck with you. Like they are literally written on your heart. So that, that has helped me a lot. Amazing, 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 amazing. Remember, remember, if you don't clap, you come here on stage. Remember. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. The next question will go for Ella Maker. Um, now, uh, as, as husband, we, we do have the responsibility, a lot of responsibility over the family's affairs. And the question is going to be, how can we as husband identify and support our wife's gifts and callings even if they differ from our own? <laughs> Praise the Lord! Uh, that's a wonderful question. Uh, I pray that God will help me to answer the little uh, I could. Um, anyway, I, th- I think uh, the best line of uh, identifying, first of all, identify, identifying the, the gifts that your wife has is there has to be a bond. The bond, we have to go beyond, uh, oh, this is my wife. That's, there has to be a very deep relationship that will make you, you know, always understand, the, understand your wife. And so I will, so if the, if the love is not there, it may be difficult to really identify where if you're just maybe a wife, <laughs> like that. It will be very, very difficult to understand and identify where the strength of your wife is. So I will just give uh, one example. Somehow, I didn't even know that this kind of question will, will come up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was listening to one, one interview on television. So the lady uh, said that there was a program organized by women. I don't know where it was, whether it was in a church or in another environment. She was given like five minutes to speak on a topic and fortunately for her, she was able to bring her husband to that program. So when she stood and was addressing, so somehow she thought she just spoke according to the script that was given to her. But once she got home, the husband said, oh, I didn't know I have a wife that can address the world. So that was an inspiration to her. So somehow she, she, now the husband has discovered that this woman can be able to, you know, be a speaker that people will listen to. So from that moment, the husband, as much as he, he could, encouraged her. You know, even, even though, the husband had his own uh, lifestyle and all whatnot. So, but, so when this woman will go for a program, the husband will be there, abandon whatever program he had, and you know, go with it. So, in a, in, uh, the bottom line is uh, uh, that bond, and then the bond will help you identify, and the bond will help you sacrifice your own. It's about sacrificing. So sacrifice your own decision and be able to prop her up. Praise that all. That's the little. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> uh-huh. As a kid, she God bless you. <laughs> Summary bonding and sacrifice, right? So thank you so much. Before I continue, um, just to give you the topic, we are, the topic is celebrating and honoring God, woman, right? So as we are going forward, I would like you to start thinking of any question that we can have. You can write it, send it to us, or we're going to pass the microphone to you, and um, we're going to ask a question. Now, back to my good friend, my bishop, um, Bishop David. So, you know, um, Sometimes the culture we, we live in, uh, coming back from African culture or some culture that they look at women as 
as a thing or as a as a trash or basically as as you know, you know, you know just go for the kitchen. All right. Um, now, what what are some practical ways we can demonstrate honor, respect to our wives, our mothers, in our daily lives? Right, so I would still go back to the scriptures, right? Um, uh, Ephesians 5, 22 to 23, right? It, talks, it gives us a basis strictly on how the relationship between a man and a woman should be, all right? And uh, that basis is uh, love relationship. The man should love sacrificially, just like Elder Emeka mentioned. It should be a sacrificial love. And that's what the Bible says, that the husband should love the wife as Christ loves the church. I, don't, I, I think you don't understand how that is. If you understand how Christ loves the church, that's how you're supposed to love your wife. Right? So irrespective of what, imagine our mess and everything, and God chooses to bring us together. Right? In love. And that's the basis. And God expects us to walk in that line. So what I say is, love sacrificially very very but there are times we, of course there are times when there will be friction it happens but then the love should supersede and that's why we say that love you know you should have a love that makes no sense it should, the love you have should not make sense ah, even though she slays me she will not slay me <laughs> <laughs> yet i will love right mm -hmm. and once you have that i think we'll, the, Everything is, is settled. <laughs> That's all I have to say. That's all you have to say. Then so every other thing will follow. Of course, there are other things about then. The basis should be that you love sacrificially. Praise God. So that means clap, clap now. Uh -huh. There's a follow up question though. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think that question says practical. Uh -huh. So do we make bed in the house? Do we take out trash? Let us have talk about the practical ways, sir. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Now, that we, now we have time. You know, you know, I mentioned. Thank you so much. <laughs> I didn't see this part coming. But then, okay. So, on the basis of love, right? These things become very easy to do. You don't even grab. I, I, well, she's here and she's a witness. I do them with ease. Mm. Right, and uh, that is that is how it should be. I love, I love children. I love being a husband, mm -hmm. and I do all that. When you know, she, all right, she she is not supposed to most times bring this up to you before you do them. Take out the trash. Do the you know do the things that you need to do in the house as a husband. Be a prayer champion. You are a priest right raise up the hand of the family to god because god is looking out to you as the husband right when the uh, when god came to the garden what who did he look for he said adam where are you right so where are you in the presence of god as as fathers as a husband and that is where you should be and every other thing will fall into place i tell you praise, praise the name of the lord that clap 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 that's a good one that's a good one that's a good great one. question sir and so there's another question coming from my own pastor, my own PCO. Over to you, course. ma. Yeah, you just said you love uh, children. You love taking out trash. How about the wife? You didn't <laughs> mention that we want to hear that. <laughs> now, I, I, now I feel like singing a love song. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I do. I love her so much. I love her so much, yes. <laughs> Praise God. That is getting too interesting now. So um, I'm seeing a lot of uh, questions now. Oga, please. I know you are next. I'm sorry. I know you are next, but it's because it's Mother's Day. Let's give Sister Christine the mic to your wife. I was going to speak about her. Uh -huh. So maybe I'll just buy into the fact that she's my wonderful wife. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, for the men, you see, I follow some economics rule which says law of comparative advantage, which is if you can do it better, there's no gold medal here. My wife can cook. She loves to cook. But in sometimes when she comes back from work and I need to do, she says, sweetie, can you do Amala for me? Can any man here try it? Pra praise the Lord. <laughs> no, no, no. See, 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 see. Don't try it. You see, what I love. See, you see, the good part is I love, I, I love this shakara that the men are doing. Imagine the Amala burning your finger. <laughs> or you burn the Amala from the bottom. But it's love because you think about the sacrifices that she has done. And it will not cost you anything to do all of that. Even cut meat and wash chicken, right? And do some other things. So picking up trash, Dick and David, is good job. So men, we can do better. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh my God. It's the uh, but I'm just a big challenge right now. Uh, okay. Some of us we want, but uh, uh, let me make my own confession right now before my wife kills me at home. <laughs> so, like, someone like me, I'm not a good cook. So, if you send me on the, in the kitchen, you're on your own. <laughs> so, I can only cook rice. And what, Esther, what else can I do? Count on me cooking, so I'm a good eater, though. <laughs> but I can do all, all the other chores in the house, right? So by cooking, now. so we have one question over there. Yes, Sister Christy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In addition to what is being said, I want to ask men these questions. Mm. And the question here is: In this part of the world, I mean, we have this notion. Our men have this notion that I'm the head. I'm the king of my home. I can't do anything. I married my wife. My wife should feed me, clean me, wash the house, take care of the baby. But what Pastor um, Dickin Davis said is really phenomenal in the sense that sacrificial love. If you say you found the wife, you went to God, you prayed about it, and you found the wife. If your wife is not good in certain things and you are better, why don't you wear the shoes and do it? You don't have to come and announce to the whole world, oh, I did this at home, I did this for my wife, I did this for my children. It's your home. It's your home and it's a joint thing. The Bible says that the two will become one, right? But I find out that in this part of the world, the men, our Nigerian men, when they come to Canada, they're still insisting, oh, I'm the head, I'm the man, I married you, you do this, you do that. Yes. You do this, you do that, but where lies that sacrificial love? If you say she is for me, she's my wife. So you need to cover everything. And if you are better in some things, wear the shoes and do it. So I want to know why is that we cannot wear shoes to do certain things in the home, especially chores. But we need to count it when we do it. Mm -hmm. uh, Good question. Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, <laughs> it's... Is, is understanding. It's understanding your environment. If you don't understand the environment where you are, if you are still living in the past, that is why you insist on the past. But if you are living in the present, you will, you will adapt to the present. Uh, in fact, uh, 2020, COVID-19 uh, taught me a big lesson that women are not superhumans. And from that point, I picked up what, in fact, like uh, my brother said, back in Nigeria, my wife was to travel to a certain place for two weeks. She cooked everything, put in the freezer. But for those two weeks, even to heat up, the things, I didn't go near it. She came back, she met everything like that. She pressed God. She said, thank God, I don't have to. Uh, in fact, when I came here, as she, it was still the same, almost the same pattern. But 2020, I, I realized that, in fact, uh, we, we even belabor them. Because they take care of home, they, care, they, care of, they go to work, 
they take care of children, they do this, they run around, and then we still expect them to come back and uh, be our servants. I mean, it is, so, so it, sometimes she will sit comfortably, I will be there doing the show, doing cooking, doing, in fact, my, my daughter enjoys my food anyway. So, 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 so I, I, I'm challenging men, please, leave the past, stay in the present, that will help us. Wow, wow, amazing, <laughs> amazing. So there's, there's one question here, as the mic is coming, you know we, as, as a... As a, all right, my, all right, can you have uh, my own friend? Hallelujah. Brother Oliver. Okay, I'm, I'm actually scared now to say one or two things. <laughs> you know, um, I think there's a place for balancing in all of these things. Um, women have the tendency to easily, um, when you start doing things, if you are not careful and you don't define it, they have the tendency to like, if you don't do it again, that means you don't love me. Probably because of one or two things. Yes. Yeah. So what I want to say is first, as much as possible, we don't have a choice. It is our own. When the man of is the head first, so that men we know, it means you have the eyes to see. It means you have the ears to hear God. It does not just speak of um, authority. It first speaks of responsibility. Authority is like 0.1% for me. It's not necessarily authority. It speaks first and foremost of responsibility before authority. All of those five senses that are in your head. That's what scripture is actually referring to when the man is the head. So I think we should understand that. If the plate is not washed at home, it is the responsibility of the man, not necessarily the woman. He is the MD. You take charge and give. You, if nobody is doing it, you have to go and do it. So, so, so we need first and foremost. Yes, you know, it, it's, it's a painful truth. It's a painful truth, but this is the truth. I'll give you a typical example. For those of us that were in Nigeria some years ago, when the MD of MTN was fired because SIM card was not registered, the MD of MTN does not know how to register SIM card. But it was the one that was fired when about 70 something thousand SIM card was not regi registered. The people that even do the registration were not staff, they were contracted. I don't know if you understand what we are saying. That is the end. That's what it means to be the head. It speaks of responsibility. Have you heard from God? What is happening in your home? Have you seen the danger that is coming? Have you prepared for it? They are talking about inflation. inflation. Have you prepared for it? Have your children eaten? Have you prepared for it? Now, let's leave that. Now, the second thing I want to say is, Please yeah, I'll, I'll, you, I'll, I'll, run, I'll run up as fast as possible. The second thing I want to say is, as much as we do all of these things at, at home, let us always help our women to understand that there are times I will not necessarily have time to do this. You have to take it up. That does not mean I do not love you. And understand what your wife call love. For some people, going to market is stinginess. For some other person, it is love. So understand what she calls love. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. God bless you. All right, all right. So now, as as the timekeeper of this house, I have to keep to time. But I'm seeing two hands, and I'm a man under authority, so I need to ask for permission. So if they allow me to give me more minutes, I give you the microphone. If not. I'm sorry, we got to cut it short. Okay. <laughs> one question from a woman. Okay, so all the men disqualify. Woman, one question. Yes, Pastor Kechi. Praise the Lord. I'm excited we have a loving men in our midst. I, I give God glory for that. 
um, I want to throw this question to the men uh, because um, naturally men don't complain. They don't um, say the magnitude of things they face. But I have a question. Um, can you please explain to us? I know you may not be able to say it all, but as a man, what kind of, what goes on in your mind changing environments, one? Two, how are you able to adapt between the two? I don't know if you get what I mean. So what, what, what like, one, uh, from one to ten, what, what, what level of pressure do you face as a man? And how do you communicate that? That's the question. How do you, how are you able to handle that? How do you communicate your, your, that pressure? Praise the Lord. Praise God. Um, great question, yes. I, um, so uh, I will take I and my wife for an example. When we moved uh, in last year, Right. Uh, when we knew we were about to come in, of course, it was the first time I'm traveling. Basically, I was I would be traveling, right? So um, there were factors that we looked at first off, and those factors could cause a friction. Number one would be finances, very, very, very key, and most people underestimate uh, the importance of all this. So when we when we moved down, but before we even moved down, we had to count the costs. And uh, maybe I was kind of beat on the lucky side because I, you know, I was favored somehow to get a job and uh, when we came in. But then, right, we had to sit down and, hey, this is what, because if the finances is not there, you start having issues from day one, first off. And those are things most people, love will not cover some of those things. Right? I love you, I love you, I know future. Eh? <laughs> So praise God. So uh, there are many others uh, because of time. I'm, I might not be able to, but I think you have to communicate, right? We communicate down to writing it down in a book. This is, right? This is the finances for this month. This is what we are doing. Oh, child care fees. Oh, honey, where is your salary coming? And it was my salary. I saw it as ours. We had to, because if I didn't have money to send, she would not see it. But when we are putting it down, and uh, she will know that, okay, true, the money is spent the way you should. Praise God. Amen. I think the best thing is to communicate. Really. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, they give us one more, the room for one more question. So it's coming from the Royals, right? Sorry? Yeah. Uh -huh. Go Hi. Ahead. Hi. Uh, I had a question. So how do you, as men, like teach your sons to value women, like through example in the household or like otherwise, how do you teach them growing up to value women? Mm -hmm. How do you teach your, your sons to value women? So I think by this time, uh, <laughs> I'll give the microphone to Reverend Titi to answer the question. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Bless you. Well, I think that uh, it's not so much sitting the person down and putting scripture to the person, which is good. We are in the home. The life you are living is all about it. No matter what you say, if you live contrary to your teachings, you've missed it. And so it is about your life, personal life. In fact. Thank you. You see, I've chosen the right person, right? Always made the right decision. Thank you so much for... I'm sorry for those that couldn't uh, ask their question for today. We'll give you time next time. Thank you so much. And as we listen to the announcement, God bless you.
Is y'all on Devon Team? Close me on John chapter 12, verse 6 says. Good morning, Grace family. Welcome to Grace News Network. My name is Kalita. Is your mother Alabewa? No, 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 no. Oh my God! Oh no, no, sir. Oh no, no. Oh my God. Notre thème pour l'année, c'est quelque chose de nouveau. Et pour le mois de mai, nous nous concentrons sur le grand amour. Our theme for the year is a new thing, and our focus for the month of May is greater love. C'est ainsi que nous savons qu'est-ce que c'est l'amour. Jésus-Christ a donné sa vie pour nous, et nous devons donner notre vie pour nos frères et nos sœurs. Chers enfants, n'aimez pas avec les paroles ou des paroles, mais avec des actions en vérité. Prenez en Jean, chapitre 3, verset 16 à 18. Love goes beyond mere emotions and feelings. It is a profound commitment and a conscious choice. Above all, it is a sacrifice to love God and others despite their differences. It is a calling to embrace the most powerful force that can transform adversaries into companions, establish the foundation for peace and nurture lasting joy. May God cause your love for him and for others to grow abundantly. May it overflow and become a source of light to those around you. Throughout this month, may you embody the essence of greater love. In Jesus' name, amen. Every morning from Monday to Saturday, please join us from 5.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. for a power pack start to your day. Please don't forget our prayer meeting every Wednesday from 9 p.m. Connect with us through the teleconference line of 647-557-8200. Every Friday is our Digging Deep Bible Study and Prayers. It is another amazing time to sit at the Master's Street. The time is 7 p.m. You can join us in person at Grace Center, or you can watch online on YouTube at TOGRH. Vision 2032. Can you plan to bring someone to church this month? Reach out to a friend, neighbor, or colleague and bring them to church. Remember, Operation Andrew is still in effect. On Saturday, May 18th, there is an encounter service for the Royals and the Blaze Church at 3 p.m. On Sunday, May 19th at 10 a.m., there is a special service. Ministering is Pastor Kumne Alamale. Please see the flyer for more information. Oh, the youth in the house! Save the date May 17th as our P3 for the month. All the youths and young adults, please plan to attend. It's going to be on the Zoom platform, and the time is 7 p.m. Can't wait to see you there! The RCCG America's 2 International Convention is happening live June 12th to the 14th, themed A New Dawn. It's going to be located at the International Convention Center in Mississauga. Ministry will be our very own Pastor E.A. Adeboye and various anointed ministers of the gospel. On the 13th of June, there will be a live concert and ministry will be Minister Ducey Oyeko and Pastor Nathaniel Bassi. Prepare to come and be blessed. It's gonna be at the International Convention Center as well. Looking forward to seeing you there. All the men in the house say hey! On Wednesday, May 29th, 2024 is our men's fellowship. The venue is the TOG Zoom meeting room at 7 p.m. For more information, please contact Brother Tunde Ikaria. Merch is still available to order as all apparels can be used all season. Kindly visit our website to place your order. TG Foundation is a non-for-profit organization whose main goal and aim is to help the indigents of our community. We're looking for sponsors and donors to support the projects that we have through the year. If you need more information, you can reach out to myself or Brother Binga, or you can also visit our website at www.togfoundation.org. We have various house fellowship locations across the GTA that will be displayed on the screen. For more information, please check out our website at www.throneofgracecanada.ca. Say, oh my God, 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 Testimonies, testimonies, testimonies. Has God done something wonderful in your life this past week, month, or year? 
Don't keep the good news to yourself. Email us at thronegreescanada.ca. We have various social media platforms for you to stay connected on. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at TOGRH. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at TOGRH as well. And don't forget to visit our website, thronegreescanada.ca. Merci d'être partie du Selfish aujourd'hui. N'oubliez pas de rester connecté tout au long de la semaine sur nos différentes plateformes de réseaux sociaux. Notre prière est que vous ressentiez son amour et sa puissance plus forte aujourd'hui que jamais. Nous vous souhaitons à tous un semaine béni et victorieuse. Jésus est le Seigneur. Thank you for being a part of today's service. Wishing you all a blessed and victorious week ahead. Jesus is Lord! So today we want to thank God for what he has done. While we're singing this song, thanking God, we also want to use the opportunity to thank and appreciate the mothers, the sisters, the wives, the daughters in the house. Amen. Be blessed by the ministration in Jesus' name. Thank you. One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are the Savior with the spiritual touch. Praise you, praise your holy name. Since you touched my life, I've never been the same. Thank you, thank you very much. You are the Savior with a spiritual touch. Praise you, praise your holy name. Since you touched my life, I've never been the same. Well, in my darkness, you are my light. Pain and confusion, you guide me all right. I sing with Jesus, you are my light. And in my blindness, you're such a beautiful sight. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. You are the Savior with a spiritual touch. Praise you, praise your holy name. Since you touched my life, I've never been the same. You are my life. You guide me all right. You are the Christ. You're such a beautiful sight. Thank you, thank you very much. You are the Savior with a spiritual touch. Praise you, praise your holy name. Since you touched my life, I've never been the same. Well, in my darkness, you are my life. You guide me all right. I sing with Jesus. You are the Christ. You're such a beautiful sight. Thank you, thank you very much. You are the Savior with a spiritual touch. Praise you, praise your holy name. Since you touched my life, I've never been the same. Thank you, thank you very much. You are the Savior with a spiritual touch. Praise you, praise your holy name. Since you touched my life, I've never been the same. Since you touched my life, I've never been the same. Since you touched my life, I've never been the same. Since you touched my life, I've never been the same. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you. Men of valor, thank you. But above all, 
The reason why we're celebrating today is because we have wonderful gifts that God has given to us. Women that gave birth to us. Women that adopted us. Women that nurtured us. Women that mentored us. Most of us men are who we are today because we have great women in our lives. Most of we, by the special grace of God walking through our women, have people who have nurtured us. Every now and then we have people taking us for games, helping us in our school lessons, cheering us on, pushing and encouraging us. We deeply appreciate every woman in the house. But we'll have time to talk about it after uh, the message. But if there's a woman by your side, I'd like you to look them eyeball to eyeball and say thank you. Turn around to at least three women and tell them thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are a spiritual touch in our lives. We deeply appreciate you. We deeply appreciate you. To bring us the word this morning by the special grace of God is um, um, somebody that will call my father in the Lord. You know, um, in the redeemed Christian church of God, there's a lot of father in the Lords that are really not father in the Lord. But somebody you can say is a spiritual mentor. It's a senior brother. It's a friend. And it's somebody that myself and my family, we deeply love and respect. Um, somebody once asked me, say, why do you call him Reverend Titi? Because that is his name. Uh, I'd like to welcome this morning to the podium, Reverend Titi Mensa to share the word with us. Hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Is it okay if you men stand while I preach? <laughs> okay, I wouldn't punish you. Just pulling your leg. Okay, now say this with me. God bless our mothers. God bless our aunties. God bless our wives. God bless our sisters. God bless our nieces. God bless our daughters. Okay, thank you. I'm going to read um, Genesis 2 18. And the Lord said, Lord God said, It's not good that a man should be alone. I'll make him a helpmate for him. This is my version of this scripture. And God saw that Adam was lonely and said, I'll give him a gift that he will treasure and he will make him happy. And so God gave Adam the womanhood. Say, God bless our mothers. Now, men, you may sit down. See, God didn't just give a woman Eve was a gift. So say to somebody beside you, if the person is a woman, thank God you are precious. You are a treasure. Yeah. Doesn't have to be your mother. Every woman is a treasure. And uh, may I say that the greatest man who ever lived of all time, the Lord Jesus Christ was born of a woman. Hallelujah. Amen. That is womanhood for you. But that's not my message. We are just appreciating the women. I've been asked by my pastor to talk on a godly woman. A godly woman. That cuts across whether you are married or yet to be married. But 
whatever your status or situation in life is. If you are a woman, I believe it will apply to you. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are living in a very challenging, challenging times, you know, situations where sometimes we don't even know who is a man or who is a woman anymore. You see? And, <laughs> and um, things are getting real, real confused and challenging. See? But in the midst of all this, there are godly people. And God's standard hasn't changed. God's will hasn't changed. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell, wherever it is, wherever it is, will not prevail against this. So I'm confident that there are women here that God is working on. Amen. And you will reach your destination Amen. in Jesus' name. Now take my scriptures. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Every wise woman builds her house, but the foolish blocks it down with her hands. Every wise woman builds, builds, builds. A godly woman is a wise woman. A wise woman is a godly woman. If you are not wise, you will definitely not be building. And as a builder, you have to have a blueprint. You work with a blueprint. There must be an architect who must have drawn the plan for you. So the godly woman, the wise person, is building with a blueprint settled. And I read Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 and 25. Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which builded his house upon a rock. Okay. Proverbs and Matthew, they see the same thing. Builders, builders, building. A wise woman builds. Jesus said, a wise man builds his house. Jesus took it one step further. And he said, a wise man builds his house upon a rock. Whosoever hear the sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man who builds his house upon a rock. Jesus took it one step further. So we're talking about a house in a building. What is this house and what is this building? Right now, I am taxing, okay? The house represents your life. The building represents your life. Your marriage, maybe your career, your home, your business, and everything else that God has committed into your hands. God does not commit anything into our hands to be pulled down. He commits things into our hands to be nurtured, to be taken care of, and to build. And so, when he says a wise woman builds her house, talking about a godly woman building her life, her home, everything around her. And Jesus said, Heareth, heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. So, and it says that is the rock. The rock is not any other philosophy, any other principle, but the scriptures. It says, these sayings of mine, which is the word of the Almighty God. And anything that is built, that is not built on the word of God, cannot last. I'm still taxing. What are the materials? The whosoever hears these sayings of mine, the word of the Almighty God. Where the word of the God is, you don't have an opinion. We are discussing here right now. The bottom line is that each and every one of us have to live his life according to the word of God. And if we conform to the word of God, there will be no issues. We have issues because we don't conform to the word of God. We have our own opinions. 
We express our feelings. We put the word of God aside. He said he built his, he built his house on the rock. You can't build it on the rock, not on your opinion, not on what is going out there, not what the majority are doing. No, not what your friends are doing, not the counsel of your mother, except if it lines up with the scriptures. So it got to be on the word of God. He built us this on the scriptures, the godly woman we are talking about. Now, I want to pieces or pull out this building block by block. We're going to take off now. Block by block by block. So that we'll see who this godly woman is. Ponder. Dwell on it. Think about it. And see where and how it applies to your life. The godly woman. Number one, she is holy. Clean hands and a pure heart. She pursues purity of heart in her actions are with right motives. In your personal life. Purity. Your motives. Everything you do. Right. We're talking about the godly woman. George. Number two, she is kind. She treats all well. She goes out of her way to be good to others. See, it's very easy when you live in certain societies to be numbed because it's like, if I may use that example, policemen in where I come from, they are, they are so used to, to um, how would I say it? <laughs> Wickedness. <laughs> yeah. That when, when they see someone suffering, someone who is in pain or something, it, don't, it doesn't move them. I've been to the police a number of times and you can see someone who needed medical attention. And they really don't care. It's like, if you die, we've seen people die. So what's your business? You know, they really don't care anymore. And what I'm saying is that if we are not careful, we will become that normal. And we live in the society and we are highly kind to each other. The godly woman is kind. So you will join a church. Number three, she is loving. Has to do with kindness too. Which means she readily forgives and bears no grudges. She readily forgives and bears no grudges. Number four, she is gentle and peaceful. I think there's a scripture that says, I'd rather stay in the, you know, in a what does it in a in a rooftop or somewhere than with a nagging or some woman. But you've got to be peaceful. She pursues peace with all men. You know, when a home is good. It has something to do with a man. It may be a mean, wicked man, but when the woman is kind, gentle, loving, and everything, guess what? Everybody, oh, that's a good home. That's a good home. Because you see, when you enter the home, it's the woman who will treat you, and she will, she will treat you well. So when the home is good, it's not so much about who the man is. This is not to excuse the man, but it is the woman. That's why it says the wise woman builds her home. The children are there. The man is there. But guess what? She is the foundation. And she builds her home. And everybody who comes in enjoys the peace and the well-being of the home because she is well um, endowed, if I may use that, to take care of anybody. Number five, I think. She is truthful. She is sincere, and her words of her mouth can be trusted. Someone said, my wife doesn't tell me how much she earns. But that's true. She says, I don't know, and I don't care. But she doesn't want me to know. What are you hiding? 
She's truthful. She's sincere. And the words of her mouth can be trusted. Number six, she is generous and hospitable. Number seven, she is humble. She is selfless. Number eight, she is selfless and hardworking. That's Proverbs 31 for you. Number nine, she is slow to speak. Slow to speak. I think um, there's a scripture. Anyway, let me move on. I've, said, I've written it here. It says, don't exceed the speed limit. I'm saying, don't run your mouth. It, is, it has been said that women express their, the reason they live longer is because they express their emotions, their sentiments, their feelings, and it takes a burden off them. If this is true, I don't know. It's a medical, I'm not a doctor. I don't care about that. See? <laughs> but if you run your mouth too much, it will get you into trouble. And a whole lot of times, that is what messes up the home. If you slap, we don't encourage anybody beating, getting physical. But let me tell you something which is true. Words go deeper than slap. Some of us, the reason why we are where we are today is because of somebody, some, something somebody said maybe 10 years ago. And you haven't forgotten it. It's still paining you. How could he or she have said that sort of thing to me? It's like a sword that has never been removed. It's still there. So be slow to speak. A godly woman is slow to speak. You remember Garden of Eden? You know how we are here today where we are? Humanity? Because somebody spoke when she shouldn't have spoken. What is Eve's business talking to um, Satan? If you read that scripture, you are going to realize that Adam was there, right? Adam wasn't far away. She was beside the woman. Why did Satan speak with the woman? Because I, this is my, my, my addition now. <laughs> Satan came and spoke to the man. And the man just totally ignored him. And you know the way it is, I said, okay, well, so he turned to Satan. Well, has God really said? And then she started talking. <laughs> and talked and talked and, got, and, got, and talked into eating the fruit. Be slow to speak. A godly woman is slow to speak. She is faithful, number 10. Number 11, she is diligent. Hebrews 6, 12 says, be not slothful. But be followers of them who through faith and daily patience with the promises. These are some of the blocks that made up the godly woman. She is, she is a woman of God. Not title. See, a godly woman is a woman of God. She doesn't have to bear a title, but she is of God. And I'm going to share briefly with you two of my favorite Bible characters. I believe they are very godly for me. Number one, Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. Not much is said and written about her in the scriptures. Not much at all. But if you put it under the microscope and you study it, you are going to realize that this is a godly woman by all means. There must have been something about her that singled her out. It wasn't arbitrary. The angels weren't going around. It wasn't lottery. Nothing arbitrary. If you, it's easy to fire, hire a driver and fire a driver. It's easy to hire a maid, housemaid, house help and fire the housemaid. You don't have to think twice. You can just fire him or her. But if you want somebody to occupy a place of uh, CEO, manager, senior executive, whatever, all those. You are very, very careful. They scrutinize you. In some places, they will go all the way to your primary school. They want to be sure they put the right person there. Because when the right person is there, things will go well. One small mistake and they can pull everything down. Whole corporation can go down just because of one mistake of a person. This is humanity. Not to talk of God looking down on humanity. Woman folk. And have to pick somebody 
who will carry the savior of the world for nine months you can imagine what they must have gone through picking selecting disqualifying people but mary was picked we talked about jesus christ the lord the lord whatever he if jesus was god then i have an excuse if he lived here as god then i have an excuse if whatever he was on earth was because he was the son of god he came from heaven from a virgin birth then i have an excuse because i didn't have all i don't i didn't come from all that stuff but i want to tell you something everything that you know about jesus christ was because she was raised up by a godly woman it was not from heaven the bible tells us and it is in proverbs so that was way before jesus was born train up a child in the way that he should go and when he is an adult grown up he will not depart so if you know about jesus christ you have to give mary some credit because she raised him well her life impacted him she's the one who told him the things that are acceptable to God and the things that are not acceptable to God. If you remember when they went to Jerusalem for the feast and they were returning, Jesus stayed. And then they had to go back and then look for him, brought him back home. The, the Bible says, and he returned with them and he was subject to them. He was subject unto them. What does that mean? He went with them and he was obedient to them. Obedient in what? Obedient. You have to be telling somebody something to be obedient to. You have to be teaching somebody to be obedient to. So he was instructed in the way of the Lord. He was taught in the way of the Lord. He grew up in the way of the Lord. And if one woman can do that, another woman can do that. And then another woman can do that. So you can do that. Hallelujah. The other woman, her name is Anna. Luke chapter 2 verse 36. I'm not reading. We are told that she lost her husband at an early age in marriage. But beautifully, she devoted the rest of her life to service to God. Now, she had the right, as a widow, she had the right to have prayed or believed God or sought for a husband and have children. But she sacrificed everything mundane for everything spiritual and eternal. And she was in the temple night and day until she became, the Bible says, she was of great age. And she had been in the temple with fasting and prayers. If you had children, we don't know. But who was taking care of her? If you had children, how about the children? Who was taking, how about her personal well-being? Who was taking care of her? But you see, she threw all these things away. So, so that she could be of service to God. Marriage is good. It will commend you to God. What you do within the marriage will commend you to God or not. It's good to have children. Children will commend you to God. How you raise them up will either commend you to God or bring you condemnation. It's good to have a good, great career. Beautiful. It will not commend you to God. What will commend you to God is what you do and how you honor the Lord with that career. So we, must, we can pursue all these things if godliness is out of it then it amounts to nothing Jesus said without me you can do nothing Anna's service wasn't really a big deal guess what she was just fasting and praying and you know the Bible calls her a prophetess 
prophetess, when she married, she wasn't a prophetess. I want to believe that as she continued in the service of the Lord in the temple, the calling came upon her. She wasn't seeking a calling, but the calling came, anointing came. The prophets of the prophet came upon her, not because she saw it, but because she just saved the Lord. And guess what? It was just prayer. You tell me you can't pray? Who told you to come pray? Godly people pray. Some men, some children have gone a wall. Is that what they call it? Yes. Yeah. Because the godly women or the women who should have been praying were missing. No, what I mean, you don't pray. You know what I'm saying? Of course you pray. But if you wake up in the morning and pray five minutes, you think it will help you? The devil is overdoing over time. This woman we are talking about was doing it night and day, night and day, night and day. Guess what he was praying for? Salvation for the Lord to come. Who told her it will come in her lifetime? She didn't know. She couldn't have known. It didn't make any difference. But she prayed anyway. But godly women pray. They give their lives. You have a husband. You have a career. You have a home. You have a How much prayer are you putting into it? How are you building it? Because at the foundation is prayer. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. The house is not a building. That house is talking about individual children of the most high God. So we got to pray. Godly women, pray. Don't buy those excuses that society has given you. I asked some people one time. I said, if God showed you, I believe everybody here is working, either you're a student or you're working, so this is for the workers, okay? You are employed somewhere. I said, if God showed you that this is God, not your pastor telling you, God showed you, you know God is telling you that they are about to fire you. But to avert it, you are going to have to pray four hours every day for the next two weeks. And guess what? This is God talking to you. So you have to go to work. I said, how many of you would pray? Every hand went up. <laughs> oh, so you can pray. <laughs> yeah, you can pray. Must anything be shown to you before you pray? Because the dangers are all over the place. Yes, and if somebody is not praying for you, they better pray for yourself. But godly women, you've got to pray. There are a lot of challenges. There are a lot of issues. But guess what? The person who said pray without ceasing, he knew before you were born. He still said pray without ceasing. So you, can't, you have no excuse. And I do not have any excuse. Godly women pray. And you are going to have to decide that you are going to pray. This is the time to pray. Don't get into trouble before you begin to pray. Because then it may be too late. Some of the men have gone, they cannot come back. Because it's too late. Some of the children have gone, they cannot come back because it's too late. Because when it was necessary, needful, and the time was ripe and ripe, the people who should pray were asleep. May God open our eyes in Jesus' name. Amen. In conclusion, a pertinent question. It is a food for thought. Does the people, do the people around you know your husband, your children, your friends, your relatives, your neighbors, your colleagues, do they see these virtues in you? Do they? Yes, we come to church. Yes, they know we are Christians. But do they know, can they confidently say that we are godly? We're talking about godly women, right? But see, there's no gender with spirituality. It applies to the men too. Right? Yes. Okay. Do people see this in us? 
The Bible said of Jesus Christ, Acts 10, 32, 38, how he went about doing good. So it was obvious everybody knew him as a good man. He was a good man. Do they know you as a good person? Your neighbors, your friends, your family members. See, usually it's very difficult to preach to our family members because, see, they see everything about you. They know you from the beginning. They know you. From, they know. So when you talk, it doesn't, it doesn't really. But when they know that ah, this man was really this, so he was that black, and now they can see you are that white. Guess what? When you talk, they listen. Even if they, they are a little bit, you know, whatever. They don't take what you say. In their closet, they know, oh, this man has really changed. This is a godly woman. This is a godly man. Because they know, they see. Even if they may not acknowledge in front of you. So if they do not know, if you, they don't know, don't kill yourself for that, Okay? Godliness is not a destination. It's not a specific destination. It's a journey. Are you here? Yes, sir. Godliness is a journey. You are traveling. We are going upward. Okay? So it may not be there today. doesn't mean it won't be there tomorrow. But don't hang on. Don't stand still on the first or the or the, on the on the rung of a ladder for too long. Don't stay on any side of the ladder for too long, which is what we've been doing. You climb one, you're on the first rung of the ladder. And he says, this is just difficult. It's too tiring. And so guess what? In all your Christian life, you are just on the first rung of the ladder. So they know you, but they don't know you as a godly person. So we must climb. We grow in grace. We move on from glory to glory. You, make, you, you pass an exam, but guess what? Your result was 52. Somebody else passed the exam, but he was 93. Is there a difference? A wide difference. Can you cover? Yes. And then someone failed, but he's also very close to the 53, 49. Did he fail? Yes. But he's just very close to somebody, but he has failed. So we don't stand on one spot. We have to move on. Godliness is progressive. It's a journey. It's a way we are on. And when you, when we get born again, we are step, we are put on that route of righteousness. And God wants us to build up, build up. Uh, you know, you know um, acquire you know, assets, you know, on the way, on the journey. So that at the end of the day, you have something to give to the almighty God. Because everything, everything on planet Earth, everything we acquire, everything we become physically is of no use when we are entering heaven. It is these qualities that will make you a mark in heaven. And if, if these qualities are not there, and you have called yourself a Christian for so long and you die, you only deceived yourself. Because without holiness, no man will see the Lord. And you can't call, say, Lord, Lord, and do know what I say. What I say is that you be like me. So if you are not like him, why do you want to get to where he is? You cannot be where he is if you don't look like him. And the only way to look like him is when we begin to acquire these virtues. You build up your life. Your husband, your friends, your people, people around you must know. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not pride. If you are humble and you don't know you are humble, you are not humble. 
If you are kind and you don't know you are kind, you are not kind because these are things we do. Bad people know they are bad. So why wouldn't good people know they are good? <laughs> anyway, you see, the conclusion of the whole matter is this. We are growing in grace. Jesus said this, said it this way. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let's bow our heads. Like I said, you have to begin to ponder, dwell on the short thing you have heard. Where do we miss it? Where am I missing it? Where are you missing it? Where do I need to add up? Where do I need to grow up? What are the changes to be made? What are the sacrifices to be made for me to get to where I must get to? Because you have to become a godly woman and we have to become godly people of a God almighty. That's what he has called us to be. Follow me. So make changes in your heart. Make changes in your life. Decide you will be different. Growth requires pain sometimes. You must be willing to endure the pain. You must be willing to make up those sacrifices. And if you are not here, if you are here right now listening to me or maybe online, and you are not born again, that means you are not godly. You don't know God and he knows you afar off. But you can be close to God. It takes one step. You acknowledge, I shouldn't be where I am. This is the only way I belong. I belong to God. I belong to the Heavenly Father. So you say, Lord, I am coming home. You, you are not born again yet. You know it. Thank God you are already in church. You can say, Lord, I am coming home. So anybody here, you want to say, Lord, I am coming home. Let me see your hand up. Anybody, you are here, you say, Lord, I want to be changed. I want to be godly. I want to be saved. I want to be known as a child of God. If you are here, may I see your hand up? Take that bold, courageous step and let the devil know you are out of his hands. Anybody? Are you raising up, lifting, lifting up your hands? Anybody, you want to say, Jesus, I'm coming. Okay, shall we rise? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we give you all the glory. This is your work. You came to save us, redeem us, deliver us, and put us in your kingdom. Lord, you said you are holy, therefore we should be holy. We give you all the glory for the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. As we examine ourselves, Father, we see there are shortcomings, areas of growth, many areas of growth, Father. I want to say thank you because we have your word to walk with, to live by, and we thank you for the Holy Spirit whom you have graciously given to us to help us in this walk. You said he will never leave us nor forsake us. So we are confident that in all our endeavors and efforts, we have the help of the Holy Spirit. That we become whom you have made us to be. Fulfilling our destinies in you and destinies in this life. That the name of the Lord be glorified in us. Father, we say, take the glory. As you change us day by day, take the glory. As you help us day by day, take the glory. As you manifest yourself in us and through us, take the glory. May we be chained continually and forever in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you again, Father. Today is Mother's Day. Do something special with their lives, Father. Thank you for the gift of womanhood. Thank you for our mothers, aunties, sisters, wives, daughters, 
Thank you for womanhood. Lord, we pray for them in the name of Jesus Christ that you will help them in the name of Jesus Christ. There's so much responsibility laid on them as women, women, but Lord, your grace is sufficient. The grace, that divine enablement, that power, that wisdom, that patience to nurture all that you put in their hands, to build up all that you put in their hands, Father, grant it unto them in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, bring fulfillment into their hearts as they serve you wholeheartedly in the name of Jesus Christ. Bring fulfillment into their hearts and supply their every need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And Lord, we say thank you again, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Have you been blessed? Have you been blessed? I can't even hear you. Have you been blessed? Let us stretch our hands toward the man of God. Let's pray for him. Ask the Lord to continually bless him. The oil of the Lord will continually be upon his ministry, his family. And the light he has shared in our hearts shall not be for just for us alone, but also for the world. In Jesus' name we pray. So it's offering time. Offering time. Okay. So um, just a word, a quick, a quick one. So let's just be mindful. When we give offering, let's not give from our mind. Let's give from our heart. Second Corinthians 9, 7 talks about giving from the heart. When you give from the mind, you are looking at, okay, salary minus rent minus. But when you're giving from the heart, you're giving from the place of love, kindness, empathy. So as we give this money, I pray the Lord will bless us all. Uh, if the media will just help us uh, show on the screen how we give our offerings. Um, you could give by give, using your envelope, give by in, with cash, use your mobile app. Media, could you just flash on, this, on the screen? Let's see how we give our offerings. So, um, Paya, let's uh, take it up then.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We glorify your mighty name for the offerings we've given. We ask, Lord, that you bless the hearts that have given. And for those who could not give, Father, we pray that you make your heavens open unto them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, Father. We know that what we have given shall be used for the advancement of your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. I hope you've had a wonderful time in the, in the presence of God. I hope you've all been blessed. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful day. You no know, mothers. I don't know. I get so emotional when I talk about mothers. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, you know. So first of all, I want to just thank God for, of course, thank God for making all this happen. Um, yeah, um, while we do this, let's the band, please, if you could just uh, help go get the gift. Please. Yeah, um, yeah, I want to just thank God, thank Pastor Israel and Pastor Choice. And also, I also want to thank the men. This time around, we actually came, according to, like, uh, the, maybe the we say, we went for their pockets hard this time around. And they responded with love. Honestly, I really want to appreciate you guys. God bless you. Uh, yeah. Could you just uh, slow down the music for a bit? Slow down with the music. Yeah. No, no, no we, we are getting there. We are getting there. So, uh, you see, for mothers, they love your love in our hearts. The place where it occupies in our hearts. Honestly, you cannot explain in words. Uh, I'll give us a small story. A very elderly man, about in his 90s, close to 100, he was asked, he was like, they were like, if you have just one more request to make before you leave this earth, what will it be? He paused for a bit and uh, he thought and he was like, in a very emotionally wrecked position, you know, he was like, my mama he said, the touch of my mother. You see, the mother was long gone, but here he was, still holding on to that love. Just to let you people know, we hold on to that love for a lifetime. You are highly appreciated. We love you from the bottom of our hearts. What we are giving is nothing compared to what you guys have done for us. I will pray that God in his, you know, wisdom will do, will do you good in Jesus' name. Yeah, so for the men, it's not just this. When we get home, I will, we are going to occupy the kitchen today. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, because I, I think we really need to do more as, as men. Because the other day I was talking to my wife and she, I was like, how is my food cooking like? She was like, when, like, ever since we got married, I only cooked once. And that was when it dawned on me that we really need to do better. So today will be the second time. So I want to urge every other man in the house, please let's, let's, uh, let's be, let's take over the kitchen for today. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and God bless you all. Yeah. Sweet Lord, I know God forget you for this suffer way, this suffer for me. Sweet mother, I'm not gonna forget you for this suffer way you suffer for me. Ah yeah, ah yeah. <laughs> when I no sleep, my mother, mother don't no sleep. sleep. When I no eat, my mother, mother no sleep. No chop. Hallelujah. 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 We, we like to 
deeply from the depths of our heart. Please uh, kindly sit down. Again, just like uh, the chairman of the Men's Fellowship, Brother Tunde, said, from the depths of our hearts, we would like to appreciate every woman, every mother in the house. Motherhood is not by the function of how many biological children you have, but by reason of how many lives you have touched. Mother Teresa did not have a single biological child, but she was a mother of India. She blessed many souls, touched the poor, touched the sick, touched the needy. Many of you have touched many lives, and we deeply, deeply, deeply appreciate you. Thank you for your love, thank you for your care, and thank you for all that you do in this house, and to God's praise and to God's glory. I would like to use this opportunity to thank, or rather to just tell those people who for one reason or the other on a day like this will be hurting because either they have, they are missing their loved parents, their mom, or somebody who means so much in their lives, who have a mother in God that will wrap his hands around you. He is an ever faithful parent. We are grateful to God. We are grateful to God. We're going to be praying for the mothers, but before we do, I, think, I don't think I would be able to finish this without thanking the mother in the house. My special treasure, otherwise called uh, Um, so many years ago when I made a choice <laughs> over the line I have come to realize that she's a good and I'm grateful to God for giving me this choice I love you, my dear, from the depths of my heart. We love you. All the women in the house, please, I'd like you to please stand and then come forward. We're, like, we're going to be praying for all the women in the house. Please, all the women in the house, make way to the front, please. I'd like you to just make your way to the front. Cannot the men stand up? Can you can you imagine? Can you see what what will happen if the women are not in church? <laughs> God have mercy. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. You see what is evident here is, was evident in the life of Jesus Christ. The first people that met him when he rose with women. May God bless you. All the men, please let's stretch forth our hands and pray for our women. The mothers in this house, that God will rest upon them. That God's favor, God's hand, God's goodness, God's mercy, God's kindness would overshadow their lives in the name of Jesus. They'll be fruitful vines. They'll be men, they'll be women of glory, women of honor, women of destiny. Women that God will fulfill purposes in their lives in the name of Jesus. God will wipe away every tear. God will take away sorrow and pain. God will remove shame and guilt and reproach from all their lives in the name of Jesus. Indeed, they will live bountifully. They will, their children will be triumphant in the land in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for our mothers. Thank you for the privilege of giving us this special gift. 
Lord, we are grateful to you, God. Lord, we return back unto, return them back unto you. And we declare your blessings over them. We declare that you have, you have blessed them in every dimension of life in the name of Jesus. You would excel. You'll be fruitful in the land. Your children will call you blessed. Your spouses will call you blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everything you lay your hands to do, we declare blessings over them. In the mighty name of Jesus. The scripture says that the woman that God, that pleases God, is the woman that fears the Lord. I pray for you today that in the name that's above every name, the fear of God will be rooted in your lives. Will be strong in your lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. That inner man that speaks of gentleness and of a quiet spirit that pleases God, receive today in the name of Jesus. You would excel in beauty, you would excel in honor. You would excel in glory, you would excel in good health. Everything that pertains to life and godliness, receive in the name of Jesus. Everything that has brought you tears from today, may God wipe away those tears. Your husbands, your spouses, your children around you will bring you joy. In this land, you will flourish. You will enjoy the goodness of God in the land of the living. In the mighty name of Jesus. As you love and take care of us and take care of others, may God take care of you. Amen. There will be no sorrow or shame in your life in the name of Jesus. For everyone who may be going through some pain, some guilt and some By reason of either the past or the present, the God that is a healer and a redeemer, may he heal and redeem your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. May that pain in your life be turned to joy. May that shame be turned to glory. May that mess be turned to miracle. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that have caused you pain in the name that's above every name. May you look at it down the line and give God glory and honor. Your children will call you blessed. Out of you we come for women that will bring God glory and honor. Voices to this nation, to God's praise and to God's glory. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We love you. As you take your seat, the Lord bless you. Can we take a faith confession please? One, two, go. I am blessed. Because Christ in me, the hope of glory. I'm a wonder to my world with undeniable proofs. Because I'm empowered by the Holy Spirit. I am a change agent because I have the mind of Christ. And I'm equipped unto all good works. Therefore, I go forth today, establishing his kingdom in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Glory to God. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, all the days of our lives, we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. The Lord bless you and have a great week.